All right, guys, so before we get started, let me just explain something real quick. A lot of people misunderstand these type of problems. Um, this is not saying that, hey, you have 4,000 newtons as a magnitude here and then 8,000 here, what's W? It's not what it's saying. So it is, um, I just did the previous one, just before we continue, right, just hear me out. I just did the previous example on this uh, subject where they gave you W and you had to find the reactions at A and B. Now, that's a totally real possible uh, problem in real life that you might get as like as a structural engineer kind of thing. They, a company might tell you, right, the, your boss might come and tell you, hey, we're going to experience this much load. How beefy do we have to make these uh, this roller and this pin? Why? Because it has to withstand a certain load, right? So these are going to have some reactions. And then you don't learn it in statics. You'll learn it in later courses. And even then, some people are still confused, but... Once you have these reactions, for you guys, that's it. That's all you guys find in this class. In later classes, you start finding stresses. And then you start sizing material using, I mean, you got to pick a material, right? You got to pick a cross section. And all that will make you a structural engineer at the end of the day. Right now, you guys are still young, like first, second year, no big deal. But there's a reason you're doing all this. And there's like it's like baby steps, right? First, you do statics and strength of materials and then like fea and you see some fea's videos on my channel already if you're curious but you're not going to get it trust me don't waste your time just yet baby steps right so what i'm trying to say is in this problem they told you hey we're going to experience this much load what's my reaction going to be in this problem and, and we found them right but in this problem they're telling you hey the company can also tell you hey this material is the only thing available on the market this roller right here whatever the case is right and this pin is the only one available right now. The other ones are maybe two years from now, you could get a better roller, but we're not going to wait that long because customer wants this thing built fast, right? All this good stuff. So what's the max load that I could put on it? The max that this one can withstand is 4,000. The max that this one can withstand is 8,000. So come on, Mr. Engineer or Mrs. Engineer, just tell me what's the max W I could put on it. And that's where you come in, okay? And I'm going to explain this problem. I saw some videos on YouTube. I don't know what the hell they did, but I'm going to explain it to you how you should approach it as an engineer okay so first step is uh let me kind of get another paper to block out the, this column right here but first step is just your free body diagram now if you saw the previous video you know what that is okay i mean you should know what it is by now but what i'm saying is for this specific problem you know what it is i go in detail on the other one so i'll kind of run quick through it here you have a magnitude at a right it's at an angle they give you this 30 and you're going to use that to find that angle you'll see in a second we know BX and BY, right? That's a pin, so it has an X and Y component. W times L, that's the magnitude of the uh, of the of the load. I didn't put L here, but I mean this distance is L. Oh, it is four actually. It's four. So L is equal to four. So it's four times W, okay? And obviously, since it's a rectangle, it acts at the center. So it acts two meters away from B and then two meters away from this point, right? From the pink pencil point. Um the A is at an angle. So right now my I want everything in my X and Y system. Blue is X, red is Y, okay? Look at A. It got shifted 30 degrees. You see that 30 degrees? Look at the blue pencil. It goes up 30. Well, what happened to the red pencil? It also moved 30, okay? So that's where I zoomed in at A, and that's what I get. Look, you see that angle 30? This is the red pencil right now. A, the magnitude A, the arrow. And look, it was originally like this, but because of that angle shift, that angle became 30. <coughs> My bad, I'm a little sick. So this one's 60, okay? So you could use either or. You could use uh, sine 30, cosine 30 to get AY and AX. AX is up here, AY is over here. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. This one is cosine 60. Okay, so look. Sine 60 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Sine 60 is equal to opposite, AY over hypotenuse, A. Cosine 60 is a, a adjacent over hypotenuse. <coughs> I might be coughing, guys. My bad. So, so you guys should appreciate this video because I should be chilling right now. So cosine 60 is equal to AXA, right? It's just basic trigonometry. Solve for AX and AY. And this is what you're going to get. Okay. Right there. That's step four. You get AY is A sine 60 and AX is A cosine 60. You're not going to go ahead and do this just yet, okay? <coughs> you need this. You need this relationship for both scenarios. We're going to assume this one's going to experience 4,000. What's this reaction? 
and we're going to assume this one's going to experience 8,000. What's this reaction? And you're going to take the one that meets both of your criteria, okay? So that's what I'm going to do right now. I just left it in that relationship. Now, I'm going to go ahead and assume that... Uh, oh, hold on. Before I continue, my bad. So, so step three is your new free body diagram, okay? So my new free body diagram is this. Now I have an AX and AY component. I found them here, right? I was able to replace that A with two components. That's all I did. Three meters. This was four meters. Two meters right here, right? B, X, B, Y, nothing changed. But I do need the X and Y. <clears throat> so what some people did is they did law of cosines or sines or whatever. And they started taking a magnitude using A alone. I'm not a fan of that. Trust me, moving forward in your whole engineering degree, you're not going to need too much law of sine and cosine. There's a lot of ways around it. You can always use it. I mean, sure, it's useful to know, right? But uh, uh, I wouldn't waste too much time with it, just FYI. In this case, I was able to characterize it so I could get the AX and the Y components. It's just a triangle, right? 30 degrees, so sine 30 is Y over 3. Boom. Cosine 30 is X over 3. So I'm able to get Y and X. So knowing that, now I could take moments about anywhere I want, okay? <coughs> so look, here's what I'm going to do. In this case... I'm going to go ahead and start with the assumption that we are going to experience 4,000 at A. So it's going to be my reaction at B kind of thing, okay? So A, Y, and A, X, I'm able to find, right? Just plug in 4,000 for here, right? Because roller A is 4,000 max. So that means A, Y is going to be this, and A, X is going to be this. That's it. That's the max value that they could be, okay? I'm going to take a moment about B to find W, and that's very easy. Why would I do it about B? Like I said, I'm an engineer, right? So taking a moment about which point on the entire graph is going to give me the best uh least least amount of headaches right if i take a moment about b i mean if i take it about let's say this point right well ax and ay are going to make a moment about it right some both of them are going to be clockwise in this case bx goes through it so we're good but by makes a, a moment so you can find by but why, why do i care i could i mean if i go through here straight to here I could find W, right? Because AX and AY make a moment, but I already know those. And then I'll need to find W, and that's the whole point of this problem, right? So, boom, just like that, I'm able to find W. And look, boom, 3.23 kilonewtons per meter. <coughs> that's not the answer. Hold on. That is the max load that you can apply here to have roller A experience 4,000, and you're fine. But we don't know what's happening at B right so that's not your answer you you that, that, that doesn't tell you anything that just tells you hey if i apply 3.23 kilonewton per meter here then a is going to be fine but is b going to be fine we don't know now i didn't go into that but hold on if you do start doing that um you can solve for b at this point you can kind of take that moment about this point like i said and you can find b y and all that good stuff and then you can find uh uh it, it, actually you kind of can't give me one second so just for now, keep that in mind, okay? Now let's go to here. Actually, hold on. You can. You can. My bad. It's been a while since I did this problem. Take us some of the forces in the y direction. What's going in the y direction? Well, it's positive AY minus WL plus BY. So you're able to find BY. And you know anything in the x direction is, I mean, some of the forces is zero, right? So AX is equal to BX. So you have BX, right? Because you know AX. AX is just equal to BX. That's it. You know, a BY is equal to AY minus WL, right? It's just some of the forces in the Y. So you're able to find BX and BY. So now that you know those two, you could just do Pythagorean theorem. BY squared plus BX squared is equal to B squared, and you can find B. And if you do that, you're going to exceed your 8,000, just FYI. And you kind of know that if you did the last problem, right? Remember? Look. When A was experiencing 3,700, 11 newtons, I probably shouldn't tell you this, right? But when it was when A was experiencing this much on the previous problem, you already exceeded 8,000, and that's your max. So you already know. So if you apply 4,000, which is an even bigger number here, you're going to get an even bigger number here. And yeah, I think you get like 9,000. I think I, when I did it, I was curious myself, and I got like 9,000 something. Or I can't remember. Just you can do it on your own, but point is that's not the answer, okay? <coughs> So now what we're going to do is we're going to assume that this experience is 8,000. So what's this? So now let's go ahead and do that. Okay. 
So yeah, it's right here. Okay, let's go here. My bad. I'm trying to just kind of figure this out. So now we're gonna take a moment about A to find, and I put W, but in this case we're not gonna know B Y or B X either, right? Just follow me what I'm doing. Now I'm gonna take a moment about A to get another equation, something that can help me out, right? At the end of the day, I'm the engineer. I gotta figure something out. So let's see what happens if I take a moment about this point. WL is going to produce a moment. What's that going to be? Clockwise, about point A, remember? So it's going to be a negative WL times 2 plus X, right? This distance plus this distance. 2.6 is X, so that means 4.6. That's what I get here, minus WL times 4.6. BY is 4 plus X, which is 2.6, so 6.6. It's producing a counterclockwise about point A, right? So that means it's positive BY 6.6. .6. Then for BX, same thing, right? Y, we determined it was 1.5. And it's doing a clockwise motion. So it's minus BX times 1.5. Boom. And I get this equation, okay? I don't know W. That's what I'm looking for. And I also want to make sure that BY and BX fall uh, under the 8,000 mark or... My bad. I mean, what I'm trying to say is, in this case, um, I know the max B is going to be 8,000. So what is BY and BX? Okay. So I don't know BX or BY. I know B is going to be 8,000, but I do not know what BX and BY is just yet. So what else can I do? I'm going to take a moment. If I take a moment about here, look, check it out. I'm going to take a moment about here. If I do that, BX doesn't produce a, a moment, right? BY does. Okay, cool. AX does. And so does AY. Remember, AX is equal to BX when you do some of the forces in the X. And, and look, give, give me one second. Before I continue, let me, let's just go ahead and do the moment about this. And I'll explain why I did it, okay? Take a moment about WL. AX is 1.5 distance away. AY is 4.6, remember? X plus 2.6. I mean, 2.6 plus 2 right here, 4.6. And then BY is 2 meters away. And that's what I got here, okay? BY times 2 counterclockwise, minus AX times 1.5, clockwise, minus AY times 4.6, clockwise, okay? And then solve for BY, okay? And look at what happens. I get BY in terms of AX and AY. There is no W because we took it about that point. WL doesn't produce a, a moment about its point, right? That's the whole point of this. We don't want a W right now. We want to find BY and BX. So if I do that, check it out, remember? I already found AX and AY. So now I actually found BY in terms of A, okay? I just made these two substitutions into here, and then I found BY, okay? <coughs> mm. So I found BY is 2.37 times A, okay? So what else do I know? Some of the forces in the X. So look, I have a positive AX here, minus bx over here so that means they must be equal to each other there's nothing else in the x direction so they're equal and opposite in sign so that means ax is equal to bx and ax was here a cosine 60 cosine 60 is just half so 0 0.5 a okay so <clears throat> now that i have bx and by in terms of a you see that well, now I could just do Pythagorean theorem. I know B squared is 8,000, right? B is 8,000. That's the whole point of this problem. We're assuming it's 8,000 to find the reactions at A. So we know B squared is 8,000. We know BX and BY in terms of A. So we could find A. We could find the reaction at A. Just like that. Okay? So plug in the numbers. That's it. 8,000 squared is equal to 0 0.25 A squared plus 5.64 A squared. Right? I just plugged in these numbers right here. Um... 2.375 when you square it, it becomes 5.64. when you square it, it becomes 0.25. 8,000, I just threw it in. Uh, nothing crazy. I found A to be 3296. So that's the magnitude. So does it fall under 4,000? Yeah, right? And it kind of should. Remember going back to this problem? If this is 8,980 when this is 3711, so if this goes down to 8,000, which is roughly like 10%, well, I mean, kind of-ish. It doesn't work exactly like that, but take away 10%-ish like 300 ish right that's like 3400 and here we got 3300 kind of makes sense boom so logically it makes sense right 
I mean, if you decrease this value, this one's also going to decrease and vice versa. Increase, increase, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, look, just like that, I found A. So now that I have A, I'm just going to let me show you everything, okay? Because it's kind of annoying. But now that I have A, now I can use these steps, 6 and 7, to find BX and BY. Boom, just like that, I found those. Now, now that I have BX and BY, I can use this equation and find W. And I found W to be 2.67 kilonewtons per meter. And boom, just like that, you got to take the lowest of the two, right? <coughs> because this one assumes <coughs> you're experiencing 4,000. And that's totally fine for point A, but you got to consider point B too. And this one assumes you're assuming 8,000 here, but we don't know this. Well, in this case, well, now we do, right? But like I said, if you were to use the first scenario, some of the forces in the Y, you'll see that the magnitude of B would have been extremely high. Okay, remember, we know AX was equal to BX from some of the forces in the X. So just like that, you were able to find BX, okay? So, uh, I mean, BX was just A cosine 60. And then BY, when you do some of the forces, is AY minus WL plus BY. You already know AY, remember? You found it. And WL, we had found it using this. And we knew BY, when you use this equation, now that you know BY and BX, when you use this equation for the first scenario, this was going to exceed 8,000. Do it on your own and you'll see. But yeah, that is the problem. So in this case, you're the engineer. You told your company, hey, I did the analysis. I assume this one was experiencing 4,000. This one was 8,000. Um, it turns out that when this one, this one's the driving factor. This is the one that's going to fail first before this one. And we saw it in both examples, right? The previous one and this one. Uh, this is the, the your, your kind of what you should look out for kind of thing. And that's the problem, guys. Nothing crazy, you see? Just like that, you told you to save the company some money, some time, some schedule, saying, hey, it should work. The most amount of load you could put is this much. Now, it's either up to the project manager or something. Like, ah, oh, damn. Like, oh, damn. Like, should I wait two years to get that new roller or pin or whatever or just live with it and kind of work around it? And that's kind of how, like, a lot of engineers are involved, right? Then maybe the project manager will go to the engineer, another engineer, not you, right? And be like, hey, look. I can't put this much load because you, the guy watching this video, just told me, or the girl, guy and girl, right, uh, just told me that it wouldn't work. <coughs> so they go to another engineer and be like, all right, cool. Let's see if we can make it work. We'll probably move some weight somewhere else kind of thing. Who knows, right? It all depends. But point is, that's how you do these problems, okay? Hope I was able to help. That's the whole page right there. And yeah, let me know if it helped. Um, I saw some other videos online. I was kind of confused myself, but... I checked it out and obviously, hopefully I was able to explain it to you guys better. But yep, let me know if it helped.